Yeah, so all in all, this is like a pretty slick little unit, I think. I think a lot of people are gonna be happy with this. It's easy to use from just the front button stuff and the controls you have on the screen. How's it going everybody today? Something new and interesting, the FTM 500. Doing a little hands-on here. This isn't uh, mine to take away, but we're gonna dive through the menus a little bit and do a little audio check, because I really wanna hear that new speaker on the big head unit. You can see just from the size of it alone, I think the magazine ads, a lot of stuff you guys have seen online, you know, the print images, because it's just a floating radio in space. You don't really get an idea for how big it is, but you know, use my head as a reference. It's a good size screen. It's bigger than the FTM 200 and the FTM 300. It's a bit smaller than the FTM 400, but I don't think it's any less usable. And it is a touch screen, so you can have full control over that. But let's flip the camera around and I'll show you a little bit more closely. All right, so looking around the radio, lots of dials. This is your volume control, your VFO, and it is a pretty decent sized VFO. And then you have function knobs, which allow you to change menu settings. Around the side here, here's your external speaker connection, which we talked about in the beginning. Here's your external mic connection. And around back, which we'll turn this way first, here's your compact flash SD card. This is likely for programming the radio, but I've also noticed in the settings that there is a record feature. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to record onto that. Here is your latch release for the head unit. If you click it in, the head unit will come loose and it's about what you'd expect. There is a couple of ports on the inside. One is for your control head or your mic. It does both. <gasps> it does both. Oh. oh, that's awesome. Okay, so hey, check this out. So there is a mic connector here. So you could go either way. You could go to this or here. That's brilliant. We've needed that for a while. I'm very happy about that. You have a threaded connector for mounting this on a dashboard or something along those lines. And it's gonna come up in, in videos, and I know we're gonna get questions on it. This head is actually, you can bevel it. There's two set screws on each side, and they've got a bit of play so that you can angle the head up. And that may be just to better position where you're at in a driving position, or it may give you better access to that kind of forward firing speaker that's in the front of this radio. But yeah, here's your, here's your forward fired firing speaker which sounds really good. We'll do a test on that in a little bit. All right, here's a test of that secondary mic connector. So we got our head unit right here. We're not using the head unit connector on the, the, the head unit for the mic. We're using the body connection. So here's the body of the radio and I've got the mic connected into it. Let's do a transmit into our FT70 test radio. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. So that's awesome. You got both way connection then. That's a killer feature. All right, around back here, you actually have a decent amount of ports. You have a antenna port, which you expect your power, and you've got an external speaker in the back, an external speaker B and A. So this is for stereo audio. Uh, Yesu sells a speaker that's split for B and A channel audio. And then you have a data port. So this will do data as well. Now, whether that has full SIV control for PTT and the radio and whatnot, Time will tell. I, I don't have the test equipment available to test that, but uh, that's also good news. And if you liked the FT6000 mobile radio, that bracket is back again with the kind of lever here. So you mount this bracket somewhere and you push the lever down and the whole radio slides off of it. So it's a really easy radio. If you were like a go box enthusiast, you could mount this, you could have another extra rail set, have one in your go box, have one in your car or whatever, and then you can just slide it in and out as you need. It's a really simple install. All right, so here's the front. You can see my hand up against it. It's, it's a really decent size actually. Going across the top, you have a GM button, which is your group monitor. If you had other DM, or DN radios available, they'd be able to auto find each other. Your DX button is gonna allow you to change the modes you're in if you hold it down. That's what would give you the WireZX slash Yesu system fusion function. This SDX is a new feature, see this little light here? If you click it, that takes it out of super DX mode. With it on, you basically get increased receive capability. I don't know what that means exactly, other than it's likely some kind of change in filtering or likely a preamp that they bump up. The little arrow button allows you to switch between your A and B channel. This is a dual VFO radio, meaning that you can use the VFO to dial it in. That big knob, and again, that is a, <laughs> that's a pretty large knob. The display button changes it into the frequency display in the bottom. Using a partner radio here, 
We're both on FM mode. If I do a little key up, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu test, you can see we got a little waterfall display, which is pretty handy if you're on a non-dummy load, you'd be able to see more activity on the band. Power button on top, that's your on off and lock key. Big shout out to Yesu on this. They've included a fun little card in the box. Now, I want to assume, looking at the quality of this, that all of the radios are going to come with this, and this does look like the retail boxing, but this has all the new functions on one side, and then common use cases, what you might do, easy channel checking, VFO band skip, group memories, and then customizable function list if you want to modify things, all on this little card. I want to see all the brands, all companies normalize this concept. This is really, really nice. It's not too much bigger than the radio. This could go like in the back seat you know just behind the driver's seat little pocket this is really good big kudos on that one around the outside of the vfo there is a pmg button which will change the display to this cool orange color now if i key up you get notice 146.520 someone was keying up so let's click on that guy kilo india 6 november alpha zulu in pmg mode and if we hold it down now it will select whichever side of the VFO you want. So if you wanted to listen to monitor P1, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, test, 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 test. So you can have up to five frequencies, I believe, on this display. These could be memory channels or VFOs you've picked up or local crosstalk that's going on. You can just hold it down to select the one you want to monitor and it will automatically put the other frequency into the B channel depending on how you utilize it. And again, that nice little card that comes with the radio gives you a little bit of easy information on how to set that up. Below the VFO here is a band slash M to V button. So if we click band, we'll cycle through the different bands of operation both for transmit and receive. So we're back to 146.520 by clicking through that. If we hold it down, we now can go into 24 band skip, which allows us to basically select anything we want to skip. For instance, like air, for instance, if we want to turn that off, which we don't, we want to leave band on or air band on. On the other side, here's a back button. If you click it, takes you back out to the main screen and VM is your switch between VFO and memory mode and if you hold it down that's where you can write a memory so let's write simplex in it looks like it's already there as the home frequency good <laughs> I might have set that I don't remember and channel 1 is 144.00 so okay good we can we can just leave that alone then we'll go back but if we wanted to go into memory mode we just click that and now you can see we're in channel 1 and there's no other channels, but your home button is 146.520. Hey, look, the color changed too. Hey, did it change when we went to PMG? It did, it went orange. And if we go out of VFO mode, hey, look at that. They got a little color identifier, so a blue, a blue LED. It looks like it's flashing on the video side, but it's a solid uh, white light. On the sides, you have your volume and squelch controls for your A and B VFO. So if I click that, here's my squelch. <laughs> But if I click it again, there's my volume control. And it looks like it's working for both. Yeah, that's your B channel squelch as well. But on the left hand side, there are function and sub dials. So if we click on that, we're greeted with a quick menu for things like scan, which why don't we do that in VFO mode? Here's your scanning speed for those that are curious. Not fast, but also not slow. We are on a dummy load, so we're not going to hear anything here. If we click it, we can get off of scan. Now it's off. Uh, we've got a transmit power setting, squelch, ARS, your tone. So if you wanted to change this to tone setting, this is where you'd do tone encoding. So for instance, tone squelch. Now the tone option is selected. This is what you're going to have to set if you want to set a repeater. So it's, you click the function dial and then adjust to the setting and there you go. So we're going to go off of that. And we're going to go APRS. We can turn that on. Now we have APRS setting turned on. DTMF, we could send a message if we wanted to with DTMF by clicking the buttons on the keypad. So if we go back, now we click on this guy, you're going to get control over the B sub, sub band. But if we hold down the function, watch what happens now. Okay, now we have what you might affectionately call a deep menu. 
you can see this is where you get into the nitty gritty for all the settings on the radio and we're already in item 64 let's see how far this goes okay so 109 uh, is the amount of memory options and these are the menu options that you'd go in if you're trying to set up something to do something special so like a beacon TX station list for APRS and whatnot this is where you'd set things like smart beaconing if you're going to be uh, driving very quickly or you're going to be going slowly you could adjust how many how often you beacon and depending on elevation changes and turns you you would do that via this setting this menu my symbol that's going to be for APRS lots of different options here your call sign for APRS settings your digi path if you're gonna have just a standard wide one two or two one and if you wanted to go to the ISS for instance you change that digi path beacon text if you're going to change your beacon text when you're intermittently transmitting for APRS so lots of APRS options where's your modem selections let's okay we'll leave that on Okay, there's a COM port selection. There you go. That would be your setting for the COM port, 96 BPS. And you can change your different formats there. What do we have in format? Okay. Search setup, log, radio ID, range ringer. Interesting. We'll leave that alone. This is a first look here, guys, uh, so I don't have a lot more information than what you're seeing. This is kind of my first crack at it. You got weather alert, pager, monitoring, recording. Oh, interesting. We're gonna take around a look in the back here. We should have done that at the beginning. Uh, let's pause there. All right, so deep, let's go back. All right, so back in the menu system, note that the text is a bit different and the brightness, we might be able to adjust that in a second for better video recording here, but here's your GPS settings, clock type if you wanna change format, mic programming keys, huh? Look at that, and here's where you can set your different settings, so weather, your DX receive, your home channel, your GM, and that's gonna get you back into Yesu System Fusion. Repeater shift important stuff there there's your home channel setting which we've defined as 146.520 fm bandwidth receive mode let's see what this is fm am oh interesting okay so you can change that as well assuming that's for um air band mic gain very good to have oh and they just give you three options normal high and then max so that's going to depend on what microphone you're using. If it's the stock mic, you're probably good for normal. Transmit power. Again, you've got three options. And we'll leave it on high. Band scope. Wide, narrow. Okay. Nice. Ah, LCD brightness. Here we go. How's that? Oh, yeah. That's much better for the camera. And you got a frequency input as well. Pretty cool. Um, all in all, it's it's a very straightforward radio to get set up and use because again, your primary configuration is just going to be click the function button, and that's going to get you most of what you need to at least get onto a repeater. Barring that, you still have all the other capabilities that are on the touch here for the group monitor function, as well as your uh, DX button for Yesu System Fusion or Wires X. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. This is about 75% speaker audio, transmitting on FM. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu test. Playing through the memory here a little bit, I stumbled on this Option 42 Front SP Mute. So I'm guessing it's the speaker that's here. I had this, or stock this came as, it just says continue. Uh, when I changed it to auto mute, the audio volume on this was a lot louder, but that could be that it's just using the top speaker versus the front firing speaker. So we'll do another audio check here and you tell me what it sounds like. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, test, test, test. This is with the auto front speaker mute setting. Should be noted while you're going through the memory, notice how it says signaling. If I go up one, it goes to audio, go back down to signaling and keep an eye on it, scan. So it gives you some information as you're going through the memory digital as to what it's uh, gonna be used by. 
or use to adjust. And the mic that this comes with is pretty standard mic for Miesu, but works, you know, perfectly fine. Really kind of handy for someone that's on the road. You got your mute button and you can set these programmable keys on the side. Pretty good. Yeah, so all in all, this is like a pretty slick little unit, I think. I think a lot of people are gonna be happy with this. It's easy to use from just the front button stuff and the controls you have on the screen. If you need that extra control, you can go into the deep menus. It gives you all the features that you would want, like on the FTM 400, but you've got some new enhancements there as well. You know, time will tell what this SDX does, at least it's a practical use case. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, transmit from the FTM 500. Test, 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 test. Not that that's gonna give you a whole ton of information, but it's a good data point at least, right? So my initial feelings on this radio are thumbs up. I was uh, pretty impressed by the fact that it takes the mic connection from either the head unit or the body. We tested that it works. That is a huge feature that basically means that if anybody's looking for a high-end mobile radio, it's not going to matter if you like to have a snaked remote cable with a really clean install to a mic or if you just want this connected right on the head unit for like a go box or something like that. So what do you all think about the FTM 500? I I think it's a good successor to the FTM 400. I have used the FTM 400 for years. It's been my primary mobile radio, mainly because of that APRS function. You don't lose any of that here, and you get some new added features on this radio that the FTM 400 didn't have. All in all though, I'm really excited for this. I think this is gonna be a really popular radio. So, hey, thanks Ham Radio Outlet for letting me take a look. Thanks for watching guys, 73.